Welcome to the new J Train podcast. Hello and welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train, Jared Freed, coming to you live from Feather Nation Studios. We're here every Monday with your emails, your stories, your questions, your am I crazy dogs. Listen, if you hear a segment here on the podcast that you want to be involved in, just title your email with the segment and then right away. So J Train Podcast at gmail.com. That's J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Today we're going to do a mailbag, a couple mailbag questions. We're going to talk to Jason Tardick about his new book that's about relationships and money. And then in the Patreon, we're going to do some restaurant talk. I read a great article in The New Yorker about members-only restaurants. We will link to it in the description of this episode. But I'm very excited about today's co-host and guest. Uh, she has a off-Broadway bathroom graffiti show in New York City. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. Yeah. It's, it was so well received. It's so beloved. They're bringing it back. Caitlin Cook, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's good to be back. How has the off-Broadway show go- gone? I mean, it's coming back, so mm-hmm. we're excited. Yeah. It's, it's about, you t- basically took, and I, your videos, they go viral like crazy <laughs> because the premise is great. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like everyone's seen something written in the bathroom and thought, who wrote that? What's their story? Right. And so the show is about those stories, and I take all the all the lyrics are from bathroom graffiti that I've been photographed. So, so you basically now you're ta- and we've had we talked about it before, but you're yeah. taking a line from the graffiti in the bathroom mm-hmm. and creating your own story from it. Yeah. So I sort of have been photographing bathroom graffiti for like 10 years. I started grouping them into songs. So there's a song that's like men's versus women's stalls. Mm-hmm. There's a song that's like people responding to each other. Um, there's about eight or nine songs in the show. And then. Uh, there's a toilet on stage and I treat the audience like we are women bonding in a bathroom, though anyone is welcome in the audience. And it's sort of about um, why people feel that they can be confessional or vulnerable when they feel anonymous, when they're in bathrooms, when they're around other people. So there's a lot of like crowd work in the show. I reveal some personal things. I get the audience to reveal some personal things. It's very fun. Well, I guess the idea of being in a place where you're doing something very personal Mm -hmm. It opens it up to like, I guess I can talk to these people. Everyone, you know, there's the book. Everyone poops. Everyone, you know, totally. isn't that a, chi- a children's book? Yeah, Every, yeah, yeah. Everybody poops. Yeah. So like that is you. There's a commonality. There's no there's no socioeconomic divide. There's no totally. you're just in the bathroom. You're just in the bathroom. And it's like sometimes you're asking a woman for toilet paper or mm. a tampon or you're doing drugs or you're fucking or you're borrowing each other's right. lipstick or someone is crying and you're comforting them. You I know? think this is more a female thing. It too. definitely is. And because like the I, I'm going in getting out. There's yeah. no chit chat. I also generally don't need something from someone else. There's no yes. community in the men's bathroom. Yes. There's, There's a lot of community in the women's bathroom. It's actually every man for himself now mm-hmm. that I think about it. Like yeah. I go in there and I'm like, someone's in my way. Get the fuck out of the way. I got to mm-hmm. pee. Yep. yep. It's yep. not like, okay, they're going through something. And I think probably that's why women have, there's more crying in the bathroom. There's, there's more there's, crying. There's like know? girls trips to the bathroom together. Right. To chit chat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, and, and also there's the, you know, hey, we, we're going to go in the bathroom, us ladies. Yeah. You're allowed to do that. Yeah. If I was like, hey, us dudes are going to go in the bathroom, it you'd be, be like, a little weird. <laughs> what drugs are you doing together? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yep. There, I could understand, like, there's like, we're going to apply makeup. We're yes. going to mm-hmm. be, we're, we're, it's our time of the month. Yes. You know, there, there are things that mm-hmm. we know uh, that I would say the, that most men know not to ask about. Yeah. You know, yeah. so... You do get a little bit of a, you know, go ahead, whatever you do. Totally. You know, I I think I would be questioned a little bit more or more (laughs) likely to be questioned. Yeah. So so this show is sort of like, I guess, men's opportunity to come see what it's like in a women's bathroom, because it's a lot of like asking the audience about their deepest, darkest secrets and sharing confessional bathroom graffiti and getting people to tell their stories. And I tell my story. And what a fun know. show. What a cool way to see Thank New York. Yeah. It's uh, it's what theater are you at? You're I'm at, back at Soho Playhouse. Soho Playhouse. Mm-hmm. So you're like in a cool section of town. Yeah. It's a place like, you know, and I said this last time you were on, mm-hmm. like you're living in New York and you're not doing New York stuff. Yeah. Probably, mm-hmm. you know, you're probably doing 
the same thing you do in Ohio or in LA or yep. in, you know, yep, yep, yep. or in Florida or mm -hmm. wherever town, but you came to New York, the home of cool. The yes. home of scenes. Mm -hmm. Every scene is here. There's a magician scene. There's a comedian scene. There's yes. a music scene. There's mm -hmm. a lawyer scene. Yes. There's a finance scene. Every scene Everything exists. And that's the thing I noticed when I first did comedy. Mm -hmm. I remember I was like leaving my job to be a comedian. And all of a sudden, like there's this whole world happening on a Tuesday night. Yeah. What? It's crazy. It's so crazy. And it's super fun to like create this little world like. I think a lot of people move to New York and they're like, I'll see a musical. And then they realize how expensive that is to do on a regular basis. And so they never, and who likes to go to Midtown? I mean, we're in Midtown right now. It's right. probably in the studio, but <laughs> it's, who no, likes but to be on the streets of Midtown? No, you want to be in Soho. You want to be yes. in a cool neighborhood, yeah. near a cool restaurant. Again, like I know the listenership of this podcast, like they're a lot like me in the sense that like, you know, maybe you would like to think you'd do the thing, but you're like, where do I even start? Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. and I'm that way where I go, I want to do cool stuff, but I don't want to like, tell me it's cool. Just tell me to exactly. go. You yeah. know, like. And I will say the last time I was on this podcast, I had so many people from from your listeners yeah. reach out because I offered a discount code, which I'll do again if you DM me oh, and beautiful. ask for a discount code. I'll give you a discount code to the show. You can come say hi, bring a friend. Like, So that's the move. Yeah. Caitlin Cook at Caitlin Cook. At the Caitlin Cook. At the Caitlin Cook mm -hmm. on social media. DM Caitlin. You're going to be able to go to the show, get a discount code. I mean... Again, it's a night. It's it's, it's a, a night. it's, it's a, an event. It's an event. Mm -hmm. Music, comedy, yeah. Interaction with the crowd. You're gonna get right. Yeah. You're gonna get the whole deal. Mm -hmm. So that's like so much fun. I love it. I want everyone to go get involved with what Caitlin's doing because I mean, whenever your videos pop up, I'm like happy. It's like Aww. it's like a fun. Thanks. It's really fun and it's funny and it's like such a creative way to all like i think things are great when they're creative and they're big and relatable and like it's yeah. both of those things mm -hmm. so everyone can relate everyone can have fun um so we're gonna do a mailbag let's let's get into the mailbag uh jared want your thoughts and if you have a question jtrainpodcast.com we also want you to comment on the youtube i want you to let us know where you are how you feel what do you think of the episode i like hearing from mm -hmm. people especially because that does help us it does totally. you know it, it, it kind of like uh it, it kicks up the dirt on social media, so yes. to speak. My current dating, and also agree or disagree, let us know, uh, my current dating situation. But on five dates with this guy, mm -hmm. last date, we had an honest conversation about where we're at. He said he's still dating other people. I said I was, but it's naturally dwindled down to him, but continuing to be out there. When you hear that, mm -hmm. what are you thinking right away about that conversation? I think... Uh, naturally dwindled is an interesting word because right. it's saying that this person is into this guy more and it's sort of like let other things drop off because they've gone on five days. Yeah, I agree with you. It's two people being di being honest in two very different very ways. Very different ways, yeah. Like he's like, I am dating other people. Yeah. That is as cut and dry as it gets. Totally. That is also telling you things mm -hmm. I'm not off the apps. I'm not convinced yeah. of this. I'm not concentrating on this. There's a lot of unsaid things. Yeah, it's like better questions are, um, are you looking to date one person in the future? What like what are you seeking out? Are you just looking to have fun? Do you want to keep dating those I, other people? Well, I think all those answers yeah. are harder to give. Exactly. You know? And, and yeah. they're hard to ask, but even hard. Like, mm -hmm. if someone said, are you looking to date other people? If, if, you know, I'm on the apps. I'm still dating yeah. other people. Like, I think that's as honest as you're going to get. Yeah. Like, and, but then when her response, I said, I was to me, if I'm in his position, the person who asked me, yeah, are you still dating other, where are your head at? And I say, I'm dating other people. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And this is, I know I'm making assumptions, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't believe them when okay. they say, I'm still, you know, I'm still dating other people too, but it's, yeah. it's dwindling down at that point. You're being honest in a different way to me. Yeah, they're hoping that you will dwindle down as well. Right. It does, doesn't it? And that's a tough assumption to make. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to defend. You can say, well, don't tell me what I'm doing. Of course I'm out there. Of course they're dwindling down. And it's like, yeah, I don't buy it based on the premise of this conversation. Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe I'm just like a more upfront, honest person who knows what they want. But I, I would say something like, I really like you and I'd be interested in doing something more exclusive. But if that's not where you're at, let me know. 
That's and that's the thing they're avoiding. Yeah. By saying, where are you at first? Yeah, exactly. It's not saying, here's what I want. Right. How does that feel to you? They're saying, where are you? Where are you? Direct me. Yeah. And then they were directed to mm -hmm. same, but different, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. same, but dwindling. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> which I just, yeah. you, you know, and it's, I understand where their, their, their thought process is. Totally. Protection mode. Yeah. I don't want to hear the negative. I don't want to mm -hmm. be disappointed. But this ended up putting you in a position that I think you're more screwed than you were had you gone, my feelings first. How does that make you feel? Yeah, I agree. Um, now you're sort of on the back foot, uh, which you could be like, okay, I guess I'll amp up dating other people again. Right. I mean, it's funny to like your offensive, what you thought was an offensive move became yeah. put you in the defensive mode. Yeah. He then said he, quote unquote, feels bad. I'm only dating him. <laughs> he didn't uh, believe her. Yeah. The dwindle, no, no, no. He didn't even buy that. Yeah. I. He says he feels bad I'm only dating him and he's still dating others. And I said, I don't. Do your thing and we'll see where it goes. Yeah. I'm going to tell her right now, yeah. no man would believe that. Yeah. I, 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 we, you're allowed to feel that way. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. Yeah. I said, what made you want to bring this up? And he said, I just want, wanted you to know I'm not with you like I am with others. And I said, I, I'd hope not, but thank you for sharing. Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah, hold on. I'm not with you like I am with others. It's so vague. <laughs> it's so vague. And she took the more positive route. Yeah. Like, I'm not with you like I'm with the others. The others yeah. are my wives. You know, like yeah. it could have, because when yeah. you say that vaguely, she chose to think, well, you think I'm more special than the others. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think I would assume that I would go that, that direction. That's the implication, too. but it's still so vague that you could, you know, that's why he said it that way. Right. Right. To He said it that way because it's not, doesn't lock him in, mm -hmm. but it does make her feel better. Yeah. Makes her feel a little special. But it doesn't make his words get used against him later. Yeah. Which this is the game that gets played when you ask for answers instead of giving your own feelings first. Yep. And I understand what he's doing. He's trying to be soft. He's kids glove, mm -hmm. kid gloves. This yeah. is uh, so with others. And I said, I had hoped not, but thank you for sharing. And we agreed to just keep an open and honest relationship with one another. And I said, all I ask is that you don't leave me on and just stay honest. That was Thursday. I haven't heard from him since. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Just keep the communication open. Yeah. Yep. Ta-ta. Yeah. Goodbye. My <laughs> mom got remarried this weekend and he knew that and said nothing all weekend. I texted him an inside joke Saturday night and no response. Thoughts about following up or is he ghosting? So what are your thoughts, Caitlin Cook? I think that he's... Um doing like a slow fade. I don't think he's like fully ghosting, but mm. I think he's like, oh, she wanted to have a more serious conversation. I'm not ready for that. I'm dating other people. I got to back off a little bit. Right. It I got gotta... to disappoint her a little bit, like through my actions of not communicating. <laughs> right. I'm gonna... and, Death yeah. by a thousand paper cuts yeah. Is, yeah. Is, is the mode. He's looking yeah. to chop her head off one it's slice so at a time. Uh, why can't people communicate? Well, I, and I, I, they can't because, listen, you have to put people in a position to communicate well. Yeah. She, I have a thing called the reveal, mm -hmm. okay? The reveal is you say how you feel, stay in I terms, yeah. and then they will be smoked out. And he, she actually did the reveal, but mm -hmm. in the hardest way possible. Yeah. She did the reveal of like, hey, where's your head at? Yeah. Which is a reveal in itself. Mm -hmm. That is me saying to you, I like you. I want to yeah. know what this is. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. He then got smoked out mm -hmm. because it, it, and this is why people don't use the reveal. Yeah. Because it's hard. It, yeah. It's hard to hear because he literally goes, I feel bad. Yeah. I feel bad and I'm dating other people. Right. Yeah. The reveal is to get someone to tell you they feel bad. Mm -hmm. It's to get you to I feel bad quicker because yeah. if you had said nothing at all about your feelings. Mm -hmm. he's going to assume this is all kosher. We're doing what totally. we're all on the same page. Yeah. You revealed you're on chapter three. He's on chapter one. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's like, I'm glad that she spoke up because right. it's five dates. And that is probably about a time that you're like, hey, I'm, I'm enjoying spending time with this person. And 
if she wanted something more, that is about the time that you should either sort of cut and run if it's not right. going to be more or start to get on the same page. Yeah. And, and yeah, this is like, this is a win that doesn't feel like a win. Yeah. And, you know, the, she says, should I follow up or is he ghosting? I, I don't think it's ghosting in this scenario. Mm-hmm. Like, I think you have the right. Ghosting is like two texts away. Yeah. Hey, haven't heard from you. Let's get together this week. Yeah. That's like text one. Yeah. If there's no response to that, hey, feeling really let down yeah. by your lack of communication, we should talk. Mm-hmm. That should get you a talk. Yeah. Five dates in mm-hmm. where you're asking for it. That's when you've been ghosted. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I don't think like, am I, when someone goes, am I being ghosted? I'm always like turned off by that whole question. Cause I'm like, yeah, you are a, not a bag in the wind. Mm-hmm. You know, you, am I being ghosted? Why don't you ask them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you can ask if you're, Hey, I want to see you this week. Yeah. And then they either give excuses, which mm-hmm. is them talking to you. Yeah. And then that turns into, what are we doing here? Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. It's a tough situation. I understand it. I think it sucks. The reveal reveals all, though. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It definitely sucks. This is this happens so much when you're dating over and over and over again. It's like trying to line up on the same page, enjoying time together, figuring out if you want the same things. Like, this is a win. Right. This is why people in relationships always like sound right, because they're like, it should be easy. Yeah. And it's going to be easy for you. Someone's going to look at you and go, and you're not going to even need this conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the idea that you needed to say like, hey, I'm, they've naturally like the, the language use of mm-hmm. naturally dwindled down. Yeah. Yeah. The minute you said naturally d- dwindled down, you should have been like, oh, I guess we're not the same page. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it's a, are you seeing anyone? Me currently? Yeah. Oh, I just got engaged. You got engaged. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm such a dude. No. I no never worry. look at the ring finger. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. So How much. did you meet your fiance? Uh, he and I were friends for a couple years and then writing partners for a long time. He's done our show. It's AJ. Okay. Holmes. <laughs> okay. This is great. <laughs> yeah. That's so exciting. Yeah. So um, we started writing songs together and sort of like fell in love doing that. This is like the, this is every ro- indie rom-com. Truly. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> we yeah. write songs together. This is uh, yeah. uh, about the toilet humor, you know? Like, yeah. It's... He directs my show. He runs all the bathroom slides. Oh, I'm so happy for his you. shows. Yeah, it's great. So. Does the stress of everyday life leave you shedding? Has menopause impacted your hormones and your hairline? When it comes to thinning hair, there are many causes and Nutrafol's multi-targeted whole body approach covers all your bases. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding with results in three to six months. Purchase online, no prescription or doctor's visits required. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. My mom loves uh, Nutrafol. My mom is a huge fan. She uses it. She loves it. She's on the subscription now. Her hair at the wedding my brother just had. I got all these comments from listeners being like, your mom's hair looks great. Nutrafol. Yeah. She swears by it. Get started today and find your personalized hair health plan with Nutrafol's hair wellness quiz. Start your hair growth journey today by taking Nutrafol's hair wellness quiz and get your personalized hair health plan today. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping at Nutrafol.com slash quiz when you're under promo code FEATHER. That's promo code FEATHER. Take the quiz and get started on reaching your hair wellness goals with Nutrafol today. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R. A F O L dot com slash quiz promo code feather neutral dot com slash quiz promo code feather men you missed out on makeup for your blemishes and they don't have high heels for you to get a better vertical jump but me undies is finally here to give you a little assist with the contoured pouch and ball caddy the micro modal sling keeps things separated and lifted so much so that nine out of ten women swear that it'll make you look huge from all black classics to fun prints that show off your sense of style meundies has a look for everyone i love that meundies 
saw underwear and were like, let's do something fun and different. They did it with the designs that they do. They did it with how soft the material they use. And now they're giving you a lift on your balls. That's pretty good. I love them. I wear them. I enjoy them. I love the prints. They're great. Not just undies anymore. They also have joggers, hoodies, onesies, and more. I have the joggers. They're great. So you can be wrapped head to toe in total comfort. Good things come in big packages at MeUndies. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash feather. That's MeUndies.com slash feather for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. So what's been helpful for you when you're like sitting there not sure of what's going on in the person across from you's head? I figure out what is going on in my head. Like, I think this as, is it. This yeah. is the thing that that's the it, it, you can't ask someone to lead you when you don't know where you want to go yourself. Yeah. And like, I think there's so much power in deciding, hey, this is what I want and I'm going to communicate it to you. And then you can decide, hey, I want those things too, or say no. And and I can feel like at least I said what I wanted. And at least right. you know what page I'm on. I'm not playing games and like. It's hard because I get, you know, I get put in the position in my dating life mm -hmm. a good amount of like, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I know this, what this guy's doing is right out of my own playbook. Yeah. I'm gonna say the nicest thing possible and I'll worry <laughs> about the hurt somewhere down the line. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to do hurt on credit, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to like, I'll pay it later. I'll pay the price later. And then it turns into like, you know, why is it ghosting? It's like, it's not ghosting. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't know how to say these things. It's hard. I feel like I used to be very much like you. Mm. And I've definitely gone through the pendulum swing of like being really don't want to hurt anyone at all to I need to be super honest and really upfront and then finding this happy medium of like, I'm going to communicate the way that like what I my needs should come first, because mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're placing that other person's like needs and, and well being over your own. Right. You're the ones doing in the anxiety of like, am I going to hurt them? Am I going to say the wrong thing? Well, and it's like backwards. It's the same thing as like her saying what's going on in your head mm -hmm. is the same way it was backwards there. It's yeah. backwards to go, oh, I'll put their needs ahead of my own. By and no one wants to be with someone that's not being truthful with them. Yeah. So it's like you're putting someone's need above your own, and you're like, Ugh, I'm doing something I don't want to be doing. Yeah. And even like, even if this guy really wanted to be with her, it's scary to have been asked the question, "Where is your head at?" Mm -hmm. Without any idea of where she wants things to go, it's scary to be right. the first person to say the thing and be sort of put on the spot. Yeah. yeah. It's so hard. J train podcast, gmail.com. Keep sending in your mailbag questions. We have another mailbag. Let's do another one. Mm -hmm. J train. Love all your podcasts and your special. Can't wait to see you in Denver in April. I can't wait to come to Denver. I think I've already been there at this point. Have I been to Denver already? Thank you for coming to the shows at Denver. No. Um, yeah. This will be the next week. This is the 15th. Yeah. So I already have left. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a good show. I, I think it was good. Um, I, 25-year-old female, need advice on what to do about my boyfriend's friend. No. <laughs> you ever dealt with a boyfriend's friend that was just... Oh, yeah. What do you... Yeah. Do you remember what you did? Did they stay friends? Was... Um, I don't want to dictate other people's relationships. And... Right. Yet, I can sort of express, hey, I don't really vibe with this person. If you're going to hang out with them, I'm not going to be around. Right. They have been friends since college, eight years ago. Both almost 30 now. The friend is loud, interrupts people, talks about himself nonstop, dominates every conversation. He constantly brags my boyfriend about expensive things he buys, saying he, he saying things like, check out this new TV I bought for a thousand dollars. Cool TV. Cool. I don't even know who shows off TVs anymore. It feels like it's written from 2003. <laughs> <laughs> I got this new flat screen. You ever heard of it? But then when he comes over to our place for a party, he won't chip in for food, takes any, uh, and takes any beer that, uh, that didn't get drank home with him. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oy. No one likes a braggy cheap guy. Last time he took a single beer home. Wow. 
The worst part of it all is he burps obnoxiously loud all the time, no matter where we are, and thinks it's funny. My boyfriend complains about him, but keeps inviting him to hang out with us anyway. I find myself dreading our friend meetups if I know he'll be there. How do I tell my boyfriend I can't be around his friend without hurting my boyfriend's feelings or sounding crazy? Thank you in advance, burpy bestie. What do you think? Oh, this is such a simple conversation. Is it? Okay. I just feel like it's telling, sitting down with your boyfriend and saying, hey, I'm so glad that you have a, a long male friendship. Mm -hmm. I think that's really hard for men to make. Um, and I'm glad that you guys like really enjoy hanging out. He and I do not vibe. There are things that just really annoy me and put me off. And and I struggle spending time with him. I'm not trying to dictate your friendship. I just, you know, let me know. Give me a heads up if he's going to join for an event and I'll make other plans. You know, it's interesting. I it is a thing of like I'm I, I think it's hard to tell a partner, but it you don't want it to be. I think a good partner friendship relationship, whatever it may be, is someone who can like see where you're coming from. Yeah. And I think that's a relationship I want to be in, mm -hmm. is someone that I can go to and go, here's the way I see it. I'm just telling you how I see it. Yeah. I'm not, you just can't be bothered. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to notice, but not bothered. Yeah. It's kind of a good place to be with this mm -hmm. because not bothered is like, yeah, that's your friend. It's always gonna be your friend. Yeah. Good luck with that friendship. Mm -hmm. I've noticed these things that make me kind of back out of times with them. Yeah. You're going to, if we're both going to be around, that's kind of for you to like figure out your way around. Yeah. Not, not the hard. I'm never going to make it harder on you. I'm never mm -hmm. going to like get mad at you for hanging out with this guy. Yeah. I'm just telling you where I stand with this guy. Exactly. I think it's even worth like, it depends on your partner. But like, I wouldn't even necessarily say the specific things that would bother me mm. because I don't want to get into their head where they're noticing. It. What if they asked you? What if they go, what's if your problem? If they wanted to know, I'd tell them. Yeah, I would tell them. But but I wouldn't like start listing all of the things. Right. He does this. Well, that's yeah. back to not being bothered. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. listen, I, I'm just letting you know. Yeah. That's a tough hang for me. Yeah. And well, why? Well, last time he came to the party, he just brought home all the beers. And yeah. it just felt like a little insulting after bragging about his thousand dollar TV. Yeah. Or like he burps a lot. And that's that's my own annoyance. That grosses me out. But, right. You know? And and your boyfriend might go, let me try and mediate this. Mm -hmm. And I think that'd be nice. Yeah. If he wants you two to hang out. But it also like he could go, well, I get it. And naturally, things kind of work themselves out with this stuff. Mm -hmm. I had a situation where I just noticed that like. A friend of mine's, so a friend of mine's like wife didn't follow me on social media. Mm -hmm. And I saw that and I go, that's weird. Cause the yeah. friend like posts my stuff all the time. Interesting. Okay. So yeah. I'm like, weird. Yeah. And I'm just like, I guess they're just like, maybe they don't use social media. Like I okay. tried, I tried doing the mm -hmm. Jared, you're taking this way too seriously. Yeah. And you're taking the, you, you know, you're, you're, you're being a narcissist. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, but notice, not bother. Yeah. Just notice. Yeah. And then the fr uh, then the wife was at like an event mm -hmm. that I, I invited them to. Mm -hmm. And she like freaked out at seeing another comedian. Interesting. And I was like, okay. so they like comedy. Yeah. They must have like a real thing with me. I don't know. Did you find so then I, I I didn't really press any yeah. further, but like it's weird to me mm -hmm. that you're like we are in this game of putting things out there direct to consumer. Yeah. You're coming on this show, we want people to go to your off Broadway show, mm -hmm. and then if I'm putting it out there, someone close to me being like, nah, yeah, it's a little bizarre, mm -hmm. and I you know and I let the friend know a little bit. I was just like. You know, yeah. I'm just letting you know I, I've noticed. Yeah. And I'm not trying to start anything, but like... Did he say anything? And they were like, no, I can see why that's weird. Okay. You know, yeah, I can see why that's bizarre. Maybe, and nothing was said, but that was just what it was. And I was like, you know, and now it's like, okay, things are going to naturally take its course. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be like inviting them to events. I don't want to bother them. Yeah. You know, like, I'm not going to... Yeah. Go that way. Like, and, and yeah. again, the naturalness of it all, like, mm -hmm. 
unless the friend, you know, let's get you two in the room. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm just being myself. Yeah. You know, if I'm not their taste, I can't really do anything about that. You know? Totally. Uh, it's, it's so hard to know what the truth is there because there's right. not it's somewhere in the middle clues. Yeah. it's between I don't care and I care a lot yeah I don't think it's zero yeah you know and that's me being sensitive that's me noticing yeah. I, I'm I think as comedians we are totally. sensitive totally. to everything and notice everything I don't think any of us are you know immune to that mm-hmm. but it, it is you know for this person you know the person writing in they're sensitive mm-hmm. they've noticed that you got a friend that they're like ugh yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's like, honestly, this situation is like a little bit better than, you know, when your friend starts dating someone that you can't stand mm. and then you sort of have to distance yourself from your own friend. Right. Because that's, you know, I guess that the would you rather of it all mm-hmm. is would you rather that you have a horrible boyfriend mm-hmm. or a horrible friend? And yeah. I think a horrible friend is better, way better. Yeah. Horrible boyfriend, because that is them. To me, horrible significant other is like a it's a show of a cry for help. Yeah. And you don't know how much to say or how and you don't want to spend time with them as a couple. And it just makes things super weird. If you're if your partner has a friend that you don't vibe with, like, that's fine. You don't have to spend time with them. Right. Your partner can. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, why aren't you spending time with my friend? He's burping. Yeah. He's taking beers. He never chips in. He always interrupts me. Always interrupts me. And he's a little bit of a bragger. Yeah. And that now you have the, uh, there's your answer. Totally. Oh, you really think that? Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm telling you how I feel about the person. Yeah. And that could get into the land of, you know, maybe your boyfriend goes, well, I love them so much. And if you won't be friends with, then now it's a relationship problem and that changes things. But, 420 is almost here and Via can help you celebrate the right way. Via's hemp products are the Swiss army knife of wellness. Need to chill out after a long day? Dealing with anxiety or stress? Need to set the mood in the bedroom? There's a gummy for all of those. Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC, all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. I used it. I think it's great. I think it's fun to do with a partner. I think it's fun to enjoy. You guys pop the gummy, you get in each other's arms, and you go, "Woo! this is a new perspective on being with a partner. I think it's so much fun to add to the game. Each of Vias gummies has their own unique strengths with and without THC. So no matter what you're looking for, there's something for you. Via legally ships in all 50 states with discreet packaging right to your door, no medical card required. If you're 21 and older, check out the link to Via in the description and use the code JTRAIN to receive 15% off. After purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them, support the show, and tell them we sent you. Celebrate 420 the right way with Via. Happy holidays. Spring cleaning doesn't just mean getting rid of the old. Get plenty of new with Box of Awesome. It's a box that shows up at your door each month filled with carefully chosen gear from the best small brands around the world. They have tons of different themed boxes, so whether you're into camping, cooking, or cocktails, Box of Awesome has something you'll love. I just love the gift to yourself. I love the idea that something shows up at your door That changes up your week, changes up your mood, makes your night a better night, and it's going to get you into products that maybe you never would have been confident enough to buy. They're going to have different things in there that might become part of your daily life. This is the way you learn. It's with the variability of a box of awesome, and they got so much cool stuff. Look at, they got, look at, there's the beach hoodie sweatshirts. They got knives, wallets. Is there wallets in there? They got t-shirts and shoes. Here's what I like. It's, it, it, I'm the same way where I look at something, I go, I don't need it. I don't need it. Now, when you sign up for Box of Awesome, they're just going to send it to you. The decision, the guilt is out of your head, out of your hands. It's not up to you. Look at that beautiful watch. I love the watch. Look at that. The bag, good duffel bag. Just a lot of cool stuff that you're basically signing up to stop feeling guilty about treating yourself. And I think Box of Awesome is a great way to do that. It's free to join. When you become a member, you'll have access to amazing discounts on a ton of different products. 90% of everything that comes in your Box of Awesome is from a small and up and coming brand. So you're gonna have something interesting and 
cool to talk about with your friends. So you'll be getting great stuff and supporting a small business. Get a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment when you sign up at boxofawesome.com, enter code JTRAIN at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code JTRAIN for a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment. Boxofawesome.com, code JTRAIN. NBA fans, listen up. You've got to try Pick 6, the newest fantasy app from DraftKings, an official partner of the NBA. Getting started is easy. Just select if a player will have more or less of a certain stat, like will a player have more than one rebound or will a player have less than three and a half assists? I love that DraftKings is coming up with new and fun ways for you to have a night on the couch watching a game that might not be your city or your team and giving you a chance to cheer along. That's what this is all about. I'm a big DraftKings user. I am a big better on sports. I love doing it. It's fun. You can put anything from a dollar on a game, which is like so great and fun and just adds a little excitement to a Tuesday night. So pick your favorite players and compete for huge cash prizes. Download the new DraftKings Pick 6 app now using code JTRAIN and take on the competition with your best NBA player picks. Only on DraftKings Pick 6 with code JTRAIN. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. 18 plus in most eligible states. Age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. Pick six, not available in all states, including but not limited to Connecticut and New York. For up-to-date lists of states, visit dkng.co slash pick six states. Void where prohibited. See terms at pick six.draftkings.com slash promos. Okay, let's go to our guest today. I'm very excited. We have Jason Tardick. He has a new book called Talk Money to Me. And it's all about the, it says the eight essential financial questions to, to it's the eight essential financial questions to discuss with your partner. Now, you are engaged. Mm-hmm. Have you had financial conversations with your partner? Oh, you yeah. guys work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had we had a really good financial conversation early on about how to divide money when we're doing creative projects together. Okay. And was we, there anyone else involved, or is it just you two? Um, was there a mediator? Was there a lawyer? Was there okay? No. no. Okay. Um, but in the past, we've also like had uh, we ha- we started a recording studio during the pandemic that then flooded and we're currently rebuilding, but we had conversations with lawyers and things about drawing up contracts with our other business partners at the Mm -hmm. time. But we like, we struck a deal that felt good for both of us and agreed to keep the conversation open. If at any point, one of us felt resentful about not earning enough from a project or spending too much time on it or whatever. Um, And it's really worked for us. And it also was just a really nice open door conversation. Money is hard to talk about. It's hard. I mean, like I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't even know when I've ever talked about it. Interesting. Uh, yeah. You know, I've been in long-term relationship, short-term relationship, mm-hmm. and I've never, you know, even, you know, to me, I've always been in, you know, a lucky enough position where I'm like, I'll pay for dinner and like not have to think about it. Mm-hmm. But like when I lived with uh, my now ex, it was like, I'll take care of this. You take care of that. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really done on the, on the board. And I do think, that's a problem. Like I, I, yeah. I actually look back on it and I wish I was different. Like, because mm. it wasn't really, it, it, it takes something math and makes it emotional when you don't talk yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. When it's talked about, even though it's hard to get through, it's math mm-hmm. and you're having it out. There's communication happening. Just like you said, like if you yeah. feel this way, well, let's get the math down so that I know when I can feel this way. Yeah. It's also interesting because everyone was raised with a different relationship with money and you assume that everyone has a similar understanding. Right. But it's not the case. No. I have like I was raised very sort of like every no the value of every penny, every dollar means something. You know, I'm I'm Jewish and like and I was just raised to like make sure that I had savings and and like not spend money on frivolous things. Mm -hmm. Whereas my fiance was raised in a way that was like you know, if, if it's raining, pay for the cab, you know, right. throw, sometimes throw money at problems because you don't want to deal with them. And that's right. actually nice to do. Yeah. And so we've like reached this kind of happy middle ground. But yeah, we've had a lot of conversations about how much savings we each have, how we want to split 
finances. Um, my I just got approval from the city to turn my apartment into an Airbnb. Okay. And our recording studio in his apartment is about to be reconstructed. So we're moving, sh- shifting money things around there. But it's, yeah, it's a lot of conversations of figuring all that's, that out. That's a lot of uncomfortable conversations. Mm-hmm. We're going to have Jason Tardik on. We're going to talk to him about his new book, Talk Money to Me. And we're going to get the expert's opinion on how to talk mm-hmm. your way smart, through smart. these things yeah. in a relationship. Okay, we're very excited to have Jason Tardik with us. Thank you so much for coming on, buddy. Jared, thank you so much for having me. Every time <laughs> I even hear your name, let alone see your face, a smile comes on yeah. mine. So it is, it's an honor. It's a privilege. I'm in the smile business, so that makes me happy. Uh, the new book called Talk Money to Me, and it's all about money and relationships, which is like the perfect you know, conversation for this podcast. What, did, what, what got you thinking about this money and relationships? What made you want to talk about it? I mean, it, they say that's the hardest thing to talk about in a relationship. It's the hardest. I mean, you know, it is, I will say, a nice little pun off talk dirty to me. You know, I had to stick that in there. But on a serious note, the relationship side, listen, we know in the United States that when it comes to love, we are struggling. All statistics tell us that we are struggling. Right. When it comes to money, we know we are struggling. I mean, if you look at a first time home buyer right now, they need to make 80% more than they made in 2020. I could bore you with so many of those statistics, Mm -hmm. but individually, those things are hard on them their own. And there are so many self-help books with both of those. Merge the two together, love and money, and you just have a straight catastrophic (laughs) disaster. Right, right? we know that. You've undertook quite a task. You're basically like, uh, uh, you know, forget just love, forget just money. I'm going after the big, the big dog at this point. Like, isn't this why? Why even try? <laughs> because, like, well, it, to me, it's like I get so energized and like I'm, I'm magnetic to. I'm, I'm just like naturally like a solver. It's kind mm. of an issue I talk about in therapy all the time. I'm the rescuer. <laughs> Got to work on that. But the bigger the issue, the more I'm like I want to be involved. Right. And we know that money arguments right now are the second leading reason for divorce behind infidelity. Mm -hmm. But if you connect infidelity, there's also something called financial infidelity, which 43% of all married or cohabitating couples are committing financial infidelity. So infidelity is the number one reason why people get divorced. Then money arguments. But there's a correlation to those who lie about their finances and who commit infidelity. So we know this is just a huge topic that needs to be addressed. What's what's an example of financial infidelity? So financial infidelity is any what is considered like material cheating, manipulation, lying or deception through money arrangements. So we're not talking about, oh, I snuck in the dessert or I got the steak instead of the chicken. We're talking about straight up manipulation and lies. I'll give you one if you will. I went on Instagram when I was doing this book. I said, guys, give me stories of financial fraud you or someone you love uh, has experienced. Got over a thousand emails on this. But the one example I put in my book. She went by Jane Doe. She was anonymous. She got married to this guy she fell in love with super quick within a year. He had better income. She had better credit. He convinced her to put the mortgage under her name. He said he would pay her on the side. They end up closing on the house. His name and her name are on the deed. The day they close, she gets a letter from the IRS saying, we own the entirety of your house because your husband has hundreds of thousands of dollars in back taxes. They get divorced and he or she and her new husband were responsible for paying off all of his IRS. Funds. I mean, these, that's financial infidelity. These are stories that you feel like only occur on like a Maury or like a divorce court or like a TV type of, you know, situation. Like, and I guess there's different versions of the story you just told. There's, okay, now I'm in a marriage with someone that I thought was going to be this type of person. And now they're this type of person financially, you know, brought you in under the you know false pre- uh, false terms so to speak totally i mean 100 percent. and even this is like tv land and we saw it on tv land we saw tinder swindler now i right. caught up with one of the girls who got swindled by the tinder swindler and i was like i was just curious like what happened now like you know this guy clearly is a scumbag right we know that the whole world knows the guy's a fraud like i'm sure things are going well now how's the celebrity you making a couple bucks no 
those creditors still, even with that backing, held her to pay every single right. dollar. She had over 250K in credit card debt from him. She had to claim bankruptcy in the country that she was born in and can't live there and is still dealing with it. So right. what I tell people at home is if the Tinder swindler who's internationally renowned still and those individuals and fraud victims are dealing with it, you too will if you don't do your due diligence. Right. And that's the, you know, the, that's the thing. Like, hey, we're together. I love you. I'll pay you on the side. This will never end. You know, our relationship is the swindle, you know, like our love, our hearts, you know, the emotional side is what gets someone to say, oh, I wouldn't do this normally, but for you, I'll do it. Exactly, which is why interpersonal loans between couples or families and friends, like so low, if I, you know, you lend a friend money, they're the number one loan that never gets repaid back because it's usually tied to emotion mm. and not the due diligence of actually what the book is called, talk money. And the, the thesis of this whole thing, Jared, is in our school systems, we weren't taught shit about money. We weren't right. taught anything. So if we're not taught about something, how the hell do we have healthy communication? about it. We don't. We don't. Right. We know that people that actually talk about it, Jared, 73% of married or cohabitating couples, we know that money arguments are a huge issue in the relationship. And of those 73%, over half of them say it leads to decreased intimacy. So it's impacting all areas of our relationship. Well, I guess the is, I'm assuming it's like, you know, I'm not confident in this subject. I feel embarrassed that I don't know, uh, you know, listen, I used to sell life insurance. You go through people's financial profiles. You ask them all these questions. You couldn't believe what people didn't know about their own finances. When you go to purchase a home, I remember feeling uh, very, uh, I, I own an apartment. I felt insecure because you get told, you don't know this. You didn't know the walkthrough. You don't know the punch list. And it's like, yeah, this isn't my job. I needed it explained to me like a toddler because my whole brain goes towards my actual career, you know, so you tend to just brush over things. And then when your partner says, well, how much do you make here? Or, you know, talks when your partner talks about money and well, you, you don't even want to get into it because you go, I'm really going to have to reveal myself. This is who I truly am. And you, you know, go, well, we'll talk, you know, we'll go to dinner, you know, whatever. And we'll get not have to talk about it. Now you're two, two years in with someone that you've never even said financial and the financial conversation with. Yeah, it's this weird thing. We just, for some reason, I don't know why. I think it's because just our, like as kids, we were taught not to talk about it or mm. we only inherited our, our the relationship our parents had with money and that became our relationship. But even as like kids, you think about health, like none of us are doctors here. But right. like even when I was six years old, eight years old, 10 years old, if something was wrong, I knew how to communicate that to the doctor. I knew typically what was healthy and unhealthy. Still financially, most people in their 30s, 40s, 50s still don't know that stuff and I think the problem is when people actually get comfortable enough to talk about it we then weaponize we then shame we then blame and so all we do is we hide our cards like we don't show our cards right. in any capacity and we just know that like all the stats out there again you could bore you with all of them they're all saying the less we talk about it the more issues happen the less healthier and wealthier we are so like all of them. so to get personal with you when I first met you you were living with your then then girlfriend at, yes. at her home. And I, and, and I remember because I was at her home cause she has a podcast. I was a guest on the podcast and you were there. I did think what's the arrangement. How did you bring that up? What was the talk? Like, was it, I'll have an apartment and I'll pay for it there and I'll live with you here and I don't have to pay for the mortgage. How did you work that out? Because to me, when I first met you, that to me, I, the first thing I thought of was the financial arrangement here. What's going on? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so a few things. One, in the book, in the first two chapters, I opened up all about this. Okay, this good. This is a great teaser. Go to get, get the people book, talk money to me. actually buy the book, right? Jason Tark, you can but, buy it anywhere books are sold. Go, go, go right now. We'll have a link to the Amazon in the bio of this episode. So go get the book right now. Okay. 
I love it. So the first two chapters we talk about in detail, but I'll tease a little bit of it. When I, The first two chapters, one of the big things I do is I say, and I say this not to brag or whatever, I say this because it builds credibility to show where I screwed up, right? But I got my MBA in accounting and finance. I'm a business owner. I uh, have been lending money and was an underwriter. Like I knew all about this. Mm. But and I've been taught money since 16. My grandpa got taken advantage of by a financial advisor, lost a percentage of his wealth. And at 16, he sat me down, showed me every number and said, you need to learn this stuff because if you don't, it's going to have a huge impact on your life. So me, even with all that information, I talk about all the things I did not do before cohabitating. And a lot of the statistics that show huge issues in relationships are cohabitating, right? So when I moved in, we got a dog together love the dog. Dog's the best thing that ever happened. But when we think about laws, there's crazy charities. There's a lot of lawyers out there that make a whole career, whole career Mm -hmm. on being attorneys for dogs and battling custody. <laughs> it's crazy. That's a whole thing. It's crazy Imagine to think about. Imagine meeting it. that person at a party. What do you do? I'm a dog lawyer. I make sure the dog gets proper custody. Jared, they're everywhere. Right. There's more people in court over dogs than other things. But what's according to state law, most state laws, your your dog is what's crazy to think about as an asset it is. And so when you think about assets, like you have to have ideas or plans for what will happen to those uh, living or non-living assets if and when you do break up. Mm. And I write the whole laundry list of all the things that I, not not her, all me, what I didn't step into. Mm-hmm. And so in the book, you'll hear a lot of those. And to your question, question, the living arrangement from the get-go, that was something that we did not step into. Now, what one system well, we listen, ended up I, stepping Well, listen, I'll in. say to you this. I, I brought it up with my guest before you came on. These are things I didn't... I, I moved in with a significant other. I didn't think of those things. We're moving in. You know, don't ruin the party. Come on, we're going to get on the parade float and go to our new apartment and start bumping uglies immediately. Let me carry you over the threshold. You don't think of these things. What is the sentence... What is a sentence you would use if you were dating someone new today, pre-move it? What is a sentence you wish you would say the next time this happens? Before moving in? Yes. What is a sentence that you wish you would say to a partner before moving in to make sure you live a better financial, honest life together? I would have eight questions for them. Okay, and they're in the book. Eight, and there are eight <laughs> numbers that I'd want to know, but I'll but you but to your to your question, I think one of the first things I would say is like a very simple one, I'd say in three words, just talk to me about what your relationship is with money. Uh, I would want to know what are they comfortable talking about it? Right. What do their annual expenses look like? What's the income look like? How much do they make? Before you move in, having an idea of what you make can actually help put an arrangement in for rent. Every situation's so different though. That's the right. problem with finances. You can't have customized cookie cutter solution, right? Right. With, it, with how Caitlin much you, and I, we're both... Well, how, sorry to interrupt, but how much you make is is... Is doesn't even matter that much. It's how much do you spend? Well, yeah, the, I mean, of course, annual expenses is so massive to your overall financial picture. And so many people that earn a lot spend more than they can. And so many people that don't earn a lot actually do the same. Like the, the, it's all over the board, but it's whatever right. your net cash inflow is after that. One quick thing on spending, people think about retirement. Whatever you spend on an annual basis, multiply that times 25, and that's what you need to retire right now. So if you spend 100K a year, Mm -hmm. you need 2.5 million to retire if you wanna live off it for 30 years. So if you can decrease the amount you spend, then you you need less for that huge vacation that you have at the end of your life. But the questions, you can't put solutions in place until you know the numbers, right? So there's a lot of different solutions you could have. Like, Jared, if you and I moved in together and we were a cohabitated couple in a whole nother world and you made two times more than me, maybe we can make a compromise where we say, hey, let's create a joint account for expenses. And when you will decide we're going to put a thousand bucks in and you put in 750, I'll put in 250 Mm -hmm. based on pro rata for our income. But you can't create these solutions until you have the conversations. And the problem is everyone's situation is different. You move in with someone in New York, that's going to be a whole lot different than moving in with someone, you know, in the in in the burbs of Nashville or Buffalo, right? right? And, so every situation can be addressed. The emotional connection to money gets more emotional when you don't know the numbers. 
And what you just said, and I think that's a good starting point, how much do you make, and this is how much I make, cards on the table, now how are we going to spend? We should spend in relation to what, you know, that's a negotiation point. You go, well, you make too much, twice as much as me, so you going to put twice as much into this thing that we can all like enjoy and, and get, you know, get benefits out of because we're living together. Groceries, you know, electric, all those things. But yeah, I, I, I guess it doesn't just go there right away. You got to start in hard numbers. Yeah, you don't. You have the definition of talking money in a healthy way is compromise. Because Jared, let me ask you this: one thing, like in the last month, if I, if I said, "Look at your financials," like you're like, "Shit, I probably shouldn't have spent there," but like I don't regret it. What right. is one of those things that you probably spend? You tell me. Oh my What's god, one thing you it would on? be Ubers. Okay, like Ubers, uh, you know, right? spending on uh, lifts and Ubers. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So then, your significant other might be purses or it might be shoes. Now, do you put a huge value on purses or shoes, Jared? No. No. But if your significant other does, and that's super meaningful to her, you have to learn to compromise to say, hey, if that's your number one priority, I'm here to support it. But maybe down the list, two, three, or four, we have to compromise. And she needs to say, if Uber is like really important to you, the ease of doing it, that's great. But also when we look at the bar tab or restaurant tab, let's compromise. It's about healthy discussion and then compromising because right now the cost of everything, it's gotten out of control. Mm -hmm. Like most people listening to this, I don't know if they were born before 19 1981 or not, but in 2022, we experienced the highest inflation rate than anyone has experienced since 1981, 9.1%. I mean, the cost of everything has gotten crazy. Child right. care is up 40% in the last four years. The cost of home, interest rates are up incredibly. When interest rates were at zero, when inflation was at zero, we could sit back and coast. If we're not stepping into this stuff today, we will get buried. Right. Get interest rate debt at over 30%, Jared. I mean, you will well, be buried for life. If you don't take care of this. And then also, if you're sitting with a partner, you know, when do you, you know, this stuff is creeping down your neck. It's making you sweat. And it's like that affects the relationship. Oh, oh, totally. Well, what happens is no matter what your situation is, right, your rent could be next to nothing and you both could be high income earners. But if something means something and it's not being done appropriately, resentment's built. And we even know through therapy, resentment immediately impacts relationship, right. tension and intimacy. Now, right? OK, so, so two people meeting in their 20s, what's the first financial conversation they have? Well, I, I mean, I think the first thing always is like, you know, don't everyone's got their own thing. You don't have to have your first conversation be like, yo, what's your net worth, right. bro? Like it doesn't have to feel like right. that. I think you have to customize it accordingly. And in, in the book, I talk about 10 questions you could ask to start having fun with money conversations. But I think if you're starting to cohabitate, like yes. if, I also say this, Jared, you, you could start to talk about checks if you start having sex. Like you could start to talk about it. But my big thing, the big warning label is before you move in with someone, there's eight Eight big questions you have to ask. Those eight questions I came up with because I used to be the guy mm -hmm. with the big rubber stamp at the bank that said approve or deny, and I would give you the interest rate, and I would tell you what type of risk you were to the bank. So I said, okay, why don't I take those numbers and mm -hmm. give them to the people? So the first one is credit score. There's so much with your credit score that you can find, and we talk about spending. The lower your credit score, the more you spend. One quick example, I had a buddy who owns a car dealership. He had someone mm. walk into his dealership. This was the same day. I had to look at the date of the invoices to put in the book. Buy, person buys 150K G-Wagon, perfect credit score. Interest rate was 2%. Their monthly payment was less, less than someone that day who walked in with a credit score below 600 buying a $21,000 Toyota Corolla mm. because their interest rate was 28% and their insurance was up the tail. So you will pay more if your credit is not managed. And the whole thing here is net worth and credit worth is not self-worth, but you've got to open your card so you can improve it together. Well, now, what if you see that and you go, I'm out? Like, what if you like start... You know, they're like, this is my credit. You ask the first question, what's your credit score? And they're like, oh, it's horrific. This is this is what it is. And you're like, well, I don't want to spend more on a Toyota Camry than I would like to. I, I, do you go separate? Separate checks forever? Do you say good luck with that one? Do you break up? What do so you say to that person? 
Okay, so this is rule number one, is what I say is don't blame and don't shame when someone is open and honest. You show your credit score and then I say I'm out. Whoever says I'm out, yeah. I would challenge the living shit out of you because I know billionaires with shitty credit scores. Uh -huh. I know people that are going to be, that have all their worth tied in equity business, terrible credit scores. A credit score does not define who you are or what you are. It can be the figured example, out. It could be worked on, it could be figured out. The example of this case, the one I told you about the person paying more monthly for a Toyota Corolla than the person in the G-Wagon, her specific situation is her parents and family members were using her as a co-signer early on when she had credit. They were using her good credit because they were bad. They didn't pay back and it impacted her. That doesn't define who she is. Right. And nor does someone's credit score. It's just about saying, hey, this is an area I'm struggling. Let's get a plan in place to fix it. Right. And you probably wouldn't have fixed it if you didn't say it out loud. You know, you just yeah, and vice versa. Vice versa. Let's play the opposite game. Let's play all the people out there that are sitting back at home that are interested to the person that has all of the all of the fancy stuff and all this stuff, but you don't know shit. You are literally, those people could be gaslighting you through assets. So they could be spending and spending and spending just because they have you under this illusion that they have all this money and you just don't have a clue to any of it because more people gaslight through their assets than they gaslight in relationships. Mm. And so we know right now household incomes, 250K in greater the number three cars driven in those households are toyotas hondas and fords the number one car driven by multi-millionaires in the united states ford f-150 so i think both sides of the equation we all need to take a step back and say let's just have these healthy conversations right. instead of assuming so everyone go buy, go buy the book it's called talk money to me jason tardik we're so pumped you came on this is all beneficial to people this is good stuff this is healthy this is communication this is relationships Go, go, go. Talk money to me. The link is in the bio of this episode. Jason, thank you so much for coming on. This is fantastic. Jared, you're the man. Thank you so much for having me. You're the best. Awesome chat with Jason Tardik. Everyone go check out the book. Caitlin Cook, thank you so much for coming on. This is fantastic. Thank you for having me. Such a blast. Everyone go check out Caitlin. Off-Broadway show. It is happening right now. Writing on the stall. Yeah, at Soho Playhouse. And then I'm also touring a bunch uh, throughout the Midwest and the West Coast. And then... Uh, the UK yeah, later um, this year. Amazing. And everyone, you can DM Caitlin at the Caitlin Cook to get a discount for tickets in New York. So yeah. what a beautiful thing. We're heading to Patreon now. Be sure to watch the rest of this episode. I am going to be talking about an article I read in the New, York, read in the New Yorker. I'm so smart. I read the New Yorker. <laughs> um, it's a why New York restaurants are going members only. A whole discussion of restaurants and what annoys you and what annoys them about you, the customer. So Check out Patreon, patreon.com slash Jared Freed and sign up. You can get the end of today's episode. We'll be right back. <laughs>